Shattered Image is a 1994 made-for-TV drama directed by Fritch Kirch and starring Jack Scalia, Bo Derrick, John Savage, Doreen Harwood, Ramon Franco, and David McCallum. Ugh. Two Jack Scalia movies in a month. I am being smited for something. The film opens with Helen driving to Illuminati headquarters where she's looking for her fashion mogul husband, Ben, who is plowing some model in his office. I came by to talk about us. Oh, wake up, Helen. There is no us. There hasn't been for a long time. We'll talk later. This conversation is off to a great start. He blows her off and gives her some words of encouragement. Yeah, I my butt off day and night. All you have to do is look good. Go to a few dinner parties, play model wife. Hell, you don't even have to put out anymore. She heads home and with a bit of conceit in her heart, watches herself on a crappy talk show. That is a picture of true love. Ben gets kidnapped and thrown into a car that hides the dealer where the car was purchased, but leaves the license plate unobscured. Brian stops by for Georgie's birthday and gives him a watch. Oh, uh... Is it me or is that thing ticking really loud? Georgie's wife is pissed with good reason when Ben drags him to help out on the kidnapping case. Brian gets his hand slapped. Where the hell you been? You were paged three times. It's my night off. It's my night off too, but I was here on the first call, dressed like an agent. You want me to go home and change? I want you to follow the rules for once in your life. Stop being such a smart ass. And be in my office first thing in the morning. There goes that raise. The kidnappers call Helen with a price. Five million dollars or he comes back in pieces. Then they give her the finger. Call this an investigation. You come here, sit around, drink my coffee while my husband is being hacked to death. Thanks for the appreciation. Ben's brother David shows up to discuss kidnapping insurance and picking up and dropping off the dough. Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. sharp, Agent Taylor will meet you at the insurance company. Now all the necessary paperwork will be ready for your signature to release the $5 million. They're not going to like this. They'll just raise premiums on other assholes that need kidnapping insurance. Back at the office, it's revealed that Ben was being arrested the day after his kidnapping for embezzlement. And Brian has a meeting with his boss, Hardy, that can only be summed up as him calling Brian a total fuck-up. Then we discover the whole thing is bullshit. Like this film! I must have been crazy to get involved in this. David, tell them it was all a mistake. Tell them to let Ben go! Helen winds up having second thoughts, but money talks. They get the call for the drop-off, but the stupid kidnappers let themselves get traced, and Brian and his gang head to the house to pull off the bust. Pulling a daring escape, they flatten Georgie, but wind up buying it Wile E. Coyote style. Hey, there's a dead, die-hard bad guy reject in a garage. You're not gonna like this. They couldn't ID either body? Well, you saw that wreck was like a barbecue down there. Apparently in 1994, we didn't have access to DNA technology. Um, yeah. Brian isn't convinced that Ben was in the car, but learns that the passenger was handcuffed and missing a pinky finger. Missing fingers of the proof, huh? Uh, uh, hey! The fuck is wrong with you? Holy shit, that's workplace violence! At Georgie's funeral, Brian sees Helen, who says that she's leaving town for a while. Hardy plans on closing the case, but Brian says nope, and we jump to three months later where Brian is running a dive shop at the pier. I guess we know who won that argument. He runs into Helen one morning and asks her out. Nope, but she invites him to her welcome home party. Then we find out she was stooping the brother. That's it? Hello, David? You can do better than that. I've missed you. People are going to see us. Since when did it bother you what people thought? Oh, God. Oh, thank God that asshole left. 
Helen feels guilty about everything that happened and decides to break it off with David, but he does let her know one thing. We may not be lovers anymore, but what we did to Ben will keep us together always. That's deep, man. That's really fucking deep. She goes to Brian's shop, buys an awesome watch, and asks him on a date, giving him a watch in the process. We get a bunch of boring small talk, and they stop by Ben's study. I guess it doesn't have doors. I did some checking, too. Really? Brian Dillon, raised in upstate New York. You moved to Malibu when you were 15. You joined the Marines, became a demolitions expert, I wonder if she used Google or Facebook. They go out to dinner, which winds up being Brian's place, have even more small talk, and discuss the Ben being alive theory. You think Ben would cut off his own finger? I've seen men do a lot worse for a lot less than $10 million. Then they start to get it on in the kitchen. No, no, not quite yet. Helen then gets a phone call about a plastic surgery bill for Ben. She goes to meet the creepy doctor and discovers that he now looks like his brother. They get together and work out a plan to kill Ben yet again. Man, I think this movie is nothing but scenes of Bo Derrick going into her house. She finds clothes, hears the shower going, encounters some shadows, and hides in the bedroom as someone tries the door. Are you sure you looked everywhere for Ben? Are you sure that he was here at all? Wait, what? There's no payoff? Nothing? He just left? That's fucking stupid. David, or maybe not David, shows up and attacks her. I'm going to do it slowly. Painfully. And it's gonna hurt, Helen. You're gonna regret it. Wait. So she's cornered. He leaves. He comes back. And attacks her. This is bullshit. She goes to Brian's place, who lights an unnecessary fire, and has her repeater story again, for the sake of those of us just tuning in. Boom, Mike! It turns out that if she remarries in five years or dies in one year, David will get all the money. Then Brian reveals that she was just firing blanks. Then they get it on! They head to the plastic surgeon's office, and it turns out that all of that was bullshit as well. I'll see you tonight, okay? okay. Remember, lock the doors. Don't worry, I... David must want an elaborate death as much as he wants that money. This could have been done so much simpler with a car accident or a break-in gone bad, instead of all this horse shit. Brian makes a drive to the scene of the crime, bringing us to full asshole in a Jeep alert. His FBI boss shows up and we discover that Brian has been working undercover on the kidnapping case the entire time. Time's up, Dylan. We had a bargain, remember? We set you up in the dive shop so you can move in on All Good's wife and settle the case one way or the other. Wait a minute, he's been fucking a suspect. That's gonna go down well in your report. I wish it could be like this forever. No, 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 no. I want this damn movie to end. They figure out it's David and he has Helen set up a showdown with him at 8 o'clock the next night. He gives her a gun with real bullets this time, and Brian goes outside trying to be conspicuous by recklessly pointing his flashlight everywhere. His keen detective skills lead him to finding a hiding place and a concussion. That's our hero, ladies and gentlemen. David shows up after just getting off work from his 1880s bar job, and oh, hi, Ben. You see, all the time you thought you and I were setting up Helen. Helen and I were setting you up. Oh, fuck you! Ben kills David and then goes to get Brian to set up a murder murder and whoops, he ditched this bitch! Why didn't you just kill him when you had the chance, moron? This guy's up to something. No fucking shit. No! Did they teach you that screaming technique at Quantico? 
Ben and Brian fight, and Helen shoots Brian. Then she shoots Ben. I am totally lost on who's teamed up with who. She makes a play run away with Brian, but he knows it's all a bunch of horse shit. I'll never tell them you were here. They believe me. Besides my blood all over the place because you fucking shot me! She ends up shooting Brian, but the gun he gave her had blanks after all. Owned! She gets busted. Yeah, I tapped that before Big Tom Callahan. The movie ends with Brian reenacting the ending to Dirty Harry. Quite poorly, I might add. The only thing shattered and shattered image is my faith in some of the people that made this movie. Did you see what I did there? I'm trying to be witty, but it just comes off like a bunch of horse shit. Kind of like this movie. It's made for TV, so odds are it's going to suck no matter what. Who is trying to screw who over? There are at least four different team-ups trying to get the money in some big elaborate fashion instead of fucking killing the person. I had a whole flow chart ready to do this. But at the end I was like, what's a fucking point? Nobody's even heard of this movie. It's a forgotten 90s flick that once ran on late night basic cable that got plopped on this list by the exotic bird of shit movies. Nobody wins in this except David McCallum. That dude got a check for being in this film five minutes at the beginning and ten minutes at the end. Give his agent a gold star. I just need more time. Why? So you can have a few more candlelight dinners or maybe play a little more grab-ass.